Welcome to Palm Sunday. Welcome to the Antioch Baptist Church North, where we are Bible-based, Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-led, and mission-bound. We stand on the four pillars of fellowship, evangelism, doctrine, and stewardship. And if you've never accepted Christ as your personal Savior, or need to renew your relationship with God, the opportunity will be given during service as well as the opportunity to give. So let us stand together this Palm Sunday and recite Psalm number 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth all generations. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. As you remain standing, let us welcome our pastor along with the Antioch members membership committee as we welcome in our candidates for baptism and right hand of fellowship. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. In the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all of Judea and all the region round about Jordan. were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance and think not to say within yourselves we have Abraham to our father for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees therefore every tree which bringeth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the gardener, but he will burn up the shape for unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me? Take me to and Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so, but thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. 
shall see God take me to the water take me to the water take me to the water to be same time. <laughs> In obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and upon your public profession of faith in him, we baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Take me to the wall. Take me to the water, water. Take me to the water to be baptized. None but the righteous. None but the righteous. None but the righteous shall see God. We stand to baptize Sister Madison right now. What a what a great name. We know some great Madison. And here we are, baptizing her and celebrating. The fact that she's accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. In obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And upon your public profession of faith in him, we baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Take me to the water. Take me to the wall, water. Take me to the wall, water. To be baptized, I love Jesus. I love Forgive me 
if I get a little happy right now. But I want to lift up the name of Jesus. He said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I draw all men unto me. And we praise God for his drawing power. And right now, we baptize TJ. He's been coming to church. He's been coming to Bible study. He's been coming getting closer to God. And he's accepted Christ as his Savior. That means one glad morning, when this life is over, he'll fly away. Hey! In obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And upon your public profession of faith in him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Take me to the water, water, take me to the water, take me to the Take me to the warm water. Take me to the warm water to be baptized. None but the righteous. None but the righteous. None but the righteous shall see. Oh, take me to the warm water. Take me to the warm water. Take me to the warm water. Let's give the Lord a hand raise and a praise because take us back to when we first believed. We thank you for the candidates that are now been baptized and those for the right hand of fellowship. As we move forward in service, we'll now have our devotion led by Deacon Calvin Booker and Brother Melvin Buchanan. Good morning, Antioch. This morning we'll be reading to you a very familiar scripture that the Lord put on our hearts. The 23rd Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He making me to lie down in the green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy art are with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Father God, once again we come thanking you this morning for letting us call your father. You're such a good God. You're such a good father to us. We just want to pause this morning and say thank you. Lord, we thank you for us demonstrating this Palm Sunday. 
Lord, you sacrificed your only begotten son to come down and save our souls, wretched people like us, that you wanted to reunite with you, Father. We weren't deserving of it, but we thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for giving us a pathway to eternal life and eternal security. And Lord, we said thank you. We didn't deserve it, Father, but you, 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 you looked upon us, Father, and you saw some good in us. We're not much, but we're all that you have. And Lord, we just thank you for it. We're not going to try to pretend that we're something that we're not. We're going to give it all to you. It's your grace. It's your mercy. Not our goodness. It's your grace. And it's your mercy. Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for this church we call Antioch. Thank you, Father, for this pastor you put on this corner. Bless him. Bless his wife. Bless his family. Then, Lord, thank you for, for the ministries at this church. That we don't just come on Sunday mornings and come on Wednesday night. But Lord, during the week we are taking care of the least, the less, and the lost. Lord, you say when we give to, when we give to, to when we when we help the, the least and the less, that we are lending to you, and that you'll repay us with your blessings. And Lord, we need your blessings. So Lord, we thank you. Keep us on your shoulders, Father. Let us always be that beacon light on this corner. That men, women, boys, and girls can come and say, "I want to be saved." Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. The Lord has given us another beautiful day to praise him if we know him and to get to know him if we don't know him. Help me, if you will, sing one of my childhood favorites, Do You Know Him? Do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know Jesus Christ, God's Son? Well, do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know Jesus Christ, God's Son. Do you know Him? Do you know Him? Do you know Jesus Christ, God's Son?
allow our worshipers to enter. Let us prepare to hear our morning announcement. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Good morning, Antioch. I am Sister Johnny Thomas. I am blessed beyond measure to bring you the announcements on this Palm Sunday. Please continue to pray for our members who are grieving, those in hospice, receiving treatment in hospitals, being cared for in nursing homes, and convalescing at home. If you would like a member from our Care and Comfort Ministry to call and pray with you, please don't hesitate to contact the church office at 404-688-5679. Antioch's Grief Share offers weekly sessions at 6.30 p.m. on Mondays. This ministry is not only for Antioch members, so please feel free to inform your family and friends. If you're interested in participating in the classes, you can sign up by sending an email to griefshare at antiochnorth.org or by visiting griefshare.org and searching for Antioch. Reverend J. Scott Copeland pastor of Prospect Baptist Church of Lafayette, Georgia, is celebrating his 10th pastoral anniversary at 3 p.m. today, Sunday, March 24th. Please make plans to attend an epic Easter bash at 1 to 5 p.m. on Easter Sunday, March 31st at 590 North Avenue. Get ready for a day packed with excitement, including a crawfish boil, bike raffles, an Easter egg hunt, refreshing snowballs, mouth watering char-grilled oysters, bounce houses for the kids, live DJ entertainment, and oh, so much more. An entry fee of $5 covers entrance to the event and the Easter egg hunt. AUMI will receive proceeds from this admissions fee. The mentioned food items will be available for purchase. Save the date for our Spring 2024 Health Fair hosted by AUMI and Choose Healthy Life. Get free health and wellness screenings and valuable health information, including biometrics, vision, dental, cooking demonstrations, health education, and much more. The health fair will be held at 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. on Saturday, April 13th at the 590 building. Antioch Youth, it's time to check in. All teens are invited to join us at Beat the Bomb. Come fellowship with us as we have our talk time. Then we'll jump into our protective gear and go on the mission to beat the paint bombs. This check-in event will be held at 3 to 6.30 p.m. on Sunday, April 14th. More information is forthcoming. Antioch, let us rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice as we celebrate and recognize the blessings of this week's Antioch birthdays. If you would like to be recognized on your very special day, please visit our website for more information. Happy birthday to our sisters, Navik Anderson, Sylvia Lipsy, Sylvia Lester, Mother Lenora Williams, Eula Austin, Karen Jackson, and brothers, Alfred Ponder III, George Austin, Anthony Harper, Cameron Woods, and John Calloway III. Please visit Antioch's website or Facebook page for additional information. And be sure to subscribe, comment, and like our YouTube channel and Facebook and Instagram pages. This concludes the announcements for Sunday, March 24th, 2024. Be well. Know that you are loved. And thank you for listening.
Yes, it is Palm Sunday, amen. As we welcome in any visitors this morning, we ask that you all stand if you're in the sanctuary, any visitors this morning. And if you are joining virtually, please type in the comment section that you are visiting with us. To our visitors, our pastor, Reverend Kale Alexander, and the entire Antioch Church family, welcome you to our Sunday morning worship service. From your visit with us today, we hope you will feel the love of Christ and the sweet fellowship that comes from our love for him. This is our special way of providing you with a rewarding and memorable worship experience. God bless you, and we thank you for your visit. Please remain standing until someone from our visitor's ministry further acknowledges your visit. Hey, man, we praise God for those who are visiting today. You came on a good day. I said you came on a good day. Palm Sunday, baptism. And today we will be celebrating with our very own Reverend J. Scott Copeland, who will be celebrating his 10th pastoral anniversary at Prospect Baptist Church. We're glad to have uh, back with us uh, Brother Vince and Sister Bethany Watson and their sons Evan and Jacob. They moved to Detroit. But uh, where are y'all? Somebody sit in the balcony. Hey, hey Vince. Glad to have y'all back. You're looking good. God bless you. Listen, on Friday night, we had a ball. Our birth month, please, birth month uh, club celebration was just awesome. And uh, we painted and we sang. And, and I, never, I never thought I would get that much enjoyment out of painting. I, I, and I can't, I can't, well, I didn't think I could paint. Sometimes you don't know what you can do until you start doing it. But as I was painting, I forgot about everything I was worried about. And we had a good fellowship. I can't tell you what all everybody did because some folks start singing. And, and we just pray that it wasn't recorded. Let somebody and ask him, has God been good to you? He, Reverend Terry Hightower called this morning. He had been in the hospital since last Sunday, but was discharged from the hospital on yesterday. And asked that we keep him in our prayers. And there's so many in bereavement and so many who are sick and so many who are taking care of those who are sick. We ask that you keep all of them in your prayer. God bless you. It's offering time, amen. As you prepare to give, whether you give electronically or here in the sanctuary, most importantly, that your heart be open to give. Let us prepare to pray. All hearts and minds. Father, we come before you this Sunday morning. And though every day is the same for you, Lord, we know that this is a unique day for us, Lord. This Palm Sunday, we commemorate the entry of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, for he was on the path 
to do what you have brought him into this earth to do. And Lord, we pray this morning as we give that we continue to be on the path of giving so that what is given can do what you have called this church to do, to help feed the least, the less, and the lost. Continue the ministries of the church from Luke's place and Ruth's place. Continue to help feed the hungry and to continue to light a path to those that are seeking the salvation of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray for your blessings upon this offering. In Jesus' name, we thank and pray. Amen. We'll now be under the directions of our, uh, uh, of our ushers, and there are ways to give are uh, listed on the screen. Amen. know this is a special Sunday in Palm Sunday, but this is also a special Sunday here in Antioch as we welcome in our new members that were baptized and also as we prepare for the right hand of fellowship. We're now in the hands of our added members committee. Good morning. 
The following persons were baptized, and when your name is called, please come forward. Adondra Duke, birth month, September. <laughs> Cameron Alexander Kai Campbell, birth month, April. <laughs> Madison Howes, birth month, August. <laughs> TJ Baptiste, Jr., birth month, November. The following person are coming to us with Christian experience, and when your name is called, please come forward. Jacqueline Underwood, birth month, April. Robert Williams, birth month, June. Latanya Logan, birth month, March. Allison Howes, birth month, March. Monica Green, birth month, March. Jackie Hot Hatcher, birth month, June. Daryl Winfrey, birth month, October. Robin Bailey, birth month, January. Rose Harden, birth month, June. Christopher Charles Foster, birth month, March. Good morning, Antioch. To our new and added members, I welcome you to look around. To your left, your right, just all around the service. You'll see a whole lot of smiling faces. That's because we're excited, we're overjoyed, and we're just having a, ready to have a party to celebrate the fact that you joined us in this house. So, but as excited as we are, there's a spiritual celebration going on in heaven today. For the Bible says the angels in heaven rejoice when one sinner repents and gives his soul to Christ. And this morning we got 14, so we're excited. Now you're joining one of God's great churches led by one of great, one of great God's great member, uh, ministers. But we at Antioch, we, do, we believe in doing the work because at Antioch, we're Bible-based, Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-led, and mission-bound. Simply put, that means we're about doing our Father's business. But there's plenty of work yet to be done. So we invite you to use the talents that God's blessed you with to come and, and do God's will. Now, there's a scripture that I want to read for you. It's from Ephesians, the second chapter, the 19th verse. It says, now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints in the household of God. Simply put, that means you're a child of God and there's nothing better. So I invite you to go to heaven with us together. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you. We're now going to have the right hand of fellowship led by Reverend Alexander and the ministers, followed by the deacons, the mothers, the deacons' wives, the ministers' wives, and the membership committee. What a joy divine, leaning on the 
everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind. I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind. I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. I'm leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus. I'm safe and secure from all along. I'm leaning on Jesus, I'm leaning on Jesus. I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day. I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. I'm leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus. I'm safe and secure from all along. I'm I'm leaning on the everlasting Oh, when the saints go marching in When the saints go marching in Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number Oh, when the saints go marching Oh, when the saints Oh, there's 
joy in knowing with him I'm going walking up the king's highway Hurry, don't have to worry. Walking up the king's highway. Oh, there'll be a blessing. You'll be possessing. Walking up the king's highway. Oh, it's a high way to heaven. None can walk up there. Oh, but the church is a high. Walking up the king's highway Oh, there'll be a blessing You'll be possessing Walking up the king's highway Church is a high way to hell Oh, none can Oh, but the Oh, it's a high way to hell
Sometimes nothing else will help. I have to not just think about it, but I have to cling to that old rugged cross. I ask that you pray for me and pray with me as I give you what God has given me on this Palm Sunday, this triumphal entry Sunday. Anybody glad that he came? I, I advise you this week, during Passion Week, take some time, study the Bible for yourself. been looking at Luke 19, Mark 11th, but I've settled today on Matthew 21, and I'm using the NIV version. Starting with verse 7, we find these words. It's, it's good to hear those pages turning. I mean, it's nice to have it up on screen, but you ought to have your Bible you can underline. Make some notes in. 
They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? Crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. I want to use as a subject today, who is this? Who is this? Jesus is triumphantly riding into Jerusalem, fulfilling prophecies such as by Zacharias 9.9, where it is written, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now, because we know the story, we know that Jesus is riding towards the end of his earthly life. Yet, he is still riding towards the Father's plan and not away from it. There seem to be some contradictory aspects of this story. Jesus is riding toward his death, but we say that this is a triumphal entry. Jesus is heading into some of the worst storms of life. He will be betrayed. He will be denied. He will be falsely accused. His friends will run out on him. He will be tried, unfairly convicted, and ultimately crucified. And Jesus knows all of this will happen, but we claim this first day of Passion Week as a victorious day. We claim victory, and we claim triumph on this day. And somebody needs to know, and may already know that you have some hard days ahead of you. Can I get a witness? You and I may face the same things that Jesus faced, betrayal, denial, false accusations, true accusations. <laughs> Don't act like everything people say about you ain't true. You told somebody they wasn't supposed to tell nobody else, but everybody got another best friend. <laughs> Face betrayal, denial, accusations, wrongful convictions in people's minds. And let me tell you, we all have at least one Friday. If you hadn't had, matter of fact, some of us can testify we've had multiple Fridays. Can I get a witness? Someone may already be in that Friday stage, but we can claim the victory before the storm is even over. We can claim the victory before the storm even starts because we know that when it's all over, we shall wear a crown. That's why I like that old song, Watch Ye, Therefore, You Know Not the... Somebody knows it. When the Lord shall call your soul away, if you labor, striving for the right, you shall wear a golden crown. Then I like that other part. Zion, when, as soon as my feet strike, 
Let me say that again. Soon as, soon as. I ain't going to be waiting around. Soon as. Look, it, they might not have my wings ready yet. They might not have my robe ready yet. They might not have my golden slippers ready yet. But soon as my feet hit Zion, I lay down my heavy burdens, put on my robe in shout and tell him my story. Soon as I can see Jesus, tell him all about my put on my robe and shout I shall wear a golden crown. Jesus is riding into Jerusalem during Passover and the city is crowded and the city is bustling with activity. Jesus is not, and I pray that you notice this, Jesus is not riding on a stallion. He's not being pulled by a chariot, but he's riding beast of burdens, working animals, not show horses. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. God doesn't need a bunch of show, ho show horses. He doesn't need a bunch of folk looking to glitter in the limelight. God needs some willing workers, some faithful workers, some who will show up when the lights aren't on when the cameras are not rolling. He's riding working animals, not show horses, animals that are accustomed to carrying heavy loads, accustomed to plowing up fields, accustomed to pulling baggage. This scene is incredible to think about because the Lamb of God is riding beast of burdens. It symbolizes that Jesus didn't come to be a show performer. But he came to plow up our fields of sin, to carry our heavy loads, and pull us out of the messes of our lives. And look, we look good in here right now. And we look like we've never done anything bad. We look like holy saints in here right now. But listen, if we were true about it, if you knew our story, then I know I can get somebody who's willing, somebody who's not ashamed to testify. You wasn't always doing as well as you're doing right now. You didn't always look this good. God had to bring you out of some mess. He had to pull you out of some muck and pull you out of some mire. That's why it ought not take that much for you to give him the praise because when you think about what he brought you out of, when you think about how he cleaned you up, when you think about where he could have left you, but he didn't leave you there, he brought you out, and here you are sitting in his house ready to, you better give him the praise. Jesus knew that Sunday's popularity would be short-lived. And I've heard it said that the same people who cried Hosanna would be the same ones who by Friday will be calling to crucify him. But listen, I don't know about that. I, I implore you to read your Bible. Uh, Luke 19 says, And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that, that they had seen. Somebody ought to say something. It wasn't the mob. It wasn't that other multitude. It, it was those who followed him, 
who were praising him. Those who believed in Jesus, watch out. I pray that this sinks in. Those who believed in Jesus did not wait until Calvary before they gave him the praise. They had already seen enough. They had seen him heal Peter's mother-in-law. They had seen enough. They had seen him heal many of many diseases. They had seen enough. They had seen him feed five and 4,000 men plus women and children. They had seen enough. They had seen him make blind eyes see, lame legs walk, lepers heal. They had seen Jesus had power over the wind and the waves and the sea. During the midst of a storm, he said, peace, be still, and the storm ceased. They had seen him walk on water. They had seen him evict a legion of demons out of one man, heal the woman with the issue of blood, and raise Jairus' daughter, the woman of Nain's son, and Lazarus from the dead. They had seen enough already to not wait until Calvary before they were willing to give him the praise. And I ask you today, have you seen enough already to give God the praise? Jesus is riding into Jerusalem. And some took their coats off and laid them in the road so, not, so that not even the donkey and the coat's feet would be sore. Those who didn't have coats began to pull down leaves from the palm trees and lay them in the road. Oh, my brothers and sisters, you may not have what someone else has. You may not have all that someone else has. You may not have as much as someone else, but you have something to praise God with. You have something to show that you love the Lord. It doesn't matter if you have a coat or a palm, but you have something to physically show that you love to praise him. You don't have to wait until Friday, and you don't have to wait until Sunday, but you can praise him anytime. You don't have to wait until you hear your favorite song. You don't have to wait until you hear from your favorite preacher. If you think about how good God has been to you, you can praise him for what he's already done. We don't praise him because of a song. It helps. We don't praise him just because of a preacher's hoop. It might help a little bit. But let me tell you something, a preacher's hoop ain't going to get you into heaven. Somebody ought to say something. And the choir is not going to get you into heaven. I've got to make it to heaven for myself. And let me tell you something, when you think about how good God has been to you, a choir ought not have to sing you happy. A preacher ought not have to preach you happy. But when you look back over your life and think about all the mountains God brought you over, all the valleys God brought you through, all the storms he carried you through, all the burdens he helped you bear, all the times he healed you, all the times he looked out for you, all the times he blessed you, you ought not wait for something else special to happen before you praise him. Tell somebody, I came to praise him. You don't know what God has done for me, but he's done so much that I can't help myself. I gotta praise him while I can. Matthew says, we praise Jesus for his mighty works. Hosanna, the highest praise. 
Hosanna. That, 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 that's praise on steroids. <laughs> Hosanna. That's praise you can't keep to yourself. Hosanna. That's praise that even when you try to stop yourself, it, it cuts loose in you. A fire starts burning and a wheel starts turning. Hosanna for what he's already done. Back then, they, they could cry Hosanna because he made blind martyr males see. Hosanna! He kicked the devils out of Mary Magdalene. Hosanna! He made the man in the pool of Bethesda get up. Hosanna! He forgave the man who was carried by four and then made him walk. Hosanna! Glory in the highest. And I submit to you today, on this Palm Sunday, this triumphal entry Sunday, Jesus deserves more than a hand clap. Hosanna! He deserves more than a foot tap. Hosanna! He deserves more than an academic head nod. Hosanna! Somebody ask, who is this? If you asked us that question today, you would hear all kinds of testimonies. Who is this? He is the one who delivered me from addiction. I ought to get a witness in the house. It ought to be somebody who's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Who is this? He is the one who, can, who comforted me when my loved one passed. Who is this? He is the one who raised me from my sick bed. Who is this? He is the one who brought my wife out of the confines of a wheelchair and let her walk again. Who is this? He put shouting on my lips. Who is this? He put a song in my heart. Who is this? He put running in my legs. Who is this? He wiped my tears away. Who is this? He turned my midnight in today. Who is this? He keeps on blessing me. Who is this? They call him the Rose of Sharon. Who is this? They call him the Lily of the Valley. Who is this? They call him the Bright and Morning Star. Who is this? Somebody in here and somebody out there knows who it is. Who is this? Somebody in the crowd went to Jesus and said, Jesus, you need to tell these people to quiet down. Jesus said, no, no. If these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Turn to somebody and say, excuse me, I don't mean to embarrass you, but I've been sitting through this service long enough. I want you to know, don't know rock. Have to praise him for me. Don't know stone. Have to say hallelujah. No stone has to say Hosanna. If you knew how he blessed me, if you knew how he delivered me, if you knew how he brought me out, if you knew how he paid my bill, if you knew how he picked me up, if you knew how he turned me around, if you knew I wipe my tears away. You'd understand why I can't just sit here like a bump on a log. I've got to praise him. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. I've got to praise him for what he's already done. I've got to praise him. Hosanna. 
Hosanna! Hosanna! Hey! Hey! If they could praise him for what he was about to do, we ought to praise him for what we know he's already done. You already know what he did was fraud. And I'm trying my best to follow the practice that Dr. C.M. Alexander taught us. It's Palm Sunday, but I'm not supposed to go to Friday yet. But, uh, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. I can't keep it to myself. If you know what Jesus did one Friday, you ought to praise him. You ought to lift him up. You ought to glorify him. Hosanna! 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 God's been good to me.
accepted Christ as your Savior and you're here in person, we pray that you come down now and give God your heart. If you're watching virtually, we pray that you type in the comment section out. I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. If you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, we pray that you come right now. You, you don't have to try to clean up before you come. You can't clean up until you come. If you accepted Christ as your Savior in the past, but you know your relationship with God is not right, we pray that you come down right now. If you're watching virtually, just type in the comment section. I, I want to renew my relationship with God. Today is a good day to get it right. No matter where you are in the world, you can make Antioch Baptist Church North your church home. The doors of the church open. Praise Him. Christ is your Savior? And have you been baptized? What brought you down? This feels like home. And she brought me. Amen. Amen. We're glad to have you. Give us your name. Uh, my name is Miles Bourne. Miles, have you ever accepted Christ as your Savior? I have. Yes, sir. And have you been baptized? I have. Amen. Amen. What brought you down? Um, well, it's kind of weird because yesterday I was I was shopping at Goodwill, and um, I met somebody, an uh, elderly lady, and she told me about the church. And she told me to come meet you, actually. And um, I don't know what like what made me go to Goodwill, what happened, but they ended up praying for me, uh, having a conversation with me. And she told me to come this Sunday, so I, I came. Amen. Uh, go real bad and it just it 
just bothered me so bad because it's lasted so long. And I'm going to a specialist, but I'm just scared. And I, and I know my faith is good in God, and I know he got me, but I just need prayer. I just need some prayer. Let me know, you know, it will be all right. Because I can't even hold my head up. I can't even praise like I want to. I just, I just. Let me tell y'all something. I don't, let, me, let me remind you where you came from. When we met, you were coming off of the street. You were strung out, and God brought you through addiction. He got you clean and sober, brought you back with your family. Now you have your own place to live in. If God can bring you through all of that, then God can bless you right now. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, right now, we just lift up eyes on all those others who did not come down, but who are suffering pain right now. God, we lift up from high tower. Lift up eyes on all those that we know about. Lift up Sister Parham. All those that we know about. All those that we don't know about. God, we're praying for your Jehovah Rapha power, your healing power. We thank you for doctors and thank you for medicine. Yet we know that healing comes from you. And God, we know just one touch, one touch can heal us. So God, we're praying for a healing right now. God, touch as only you can. God, right now, we can't end this prayer without saying thank you. God is some witnesses in the house who can testify that when we were sick, you touched us and brought us up out of our sick bed. Oh, can we get a witness? God, we praise you for having that healing power. And right now, we lift our honor up. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Look at what God has done. He was at goodwill. I was looking over there trying to make sure it wasn't Lisa he ran into. <laughs> We had one other who joined online, Sister Lawanda Haynes. Yeah. We're also asking to keep Reverend Charlie Walker's wife, Sister Walker. Her mother passed on yesterday uh, in Ohio, and, and they are going to see about her. I'm sorry, we've done as the Lord commands, and there's still room. Let me encourage you to follow this week's schedule. And on Friday at 12 o'clock, let me encourage you to be here for the seven last words. If you've never been a part of that, you, you need to see it. But we'll have seven preachers preaching from the seven things that Jesus said from the cross. Uh, we, again, give God the praise for so much that he's done. Uh, good to see Sister Jean Jones back. We, you still in our prayers. Good to see Sister Effie Knowles here, still in our prayers. And let me tell you, God will hold your hand, and God will guide your feet. We're so happy to celebrate today with Reverend J. Scott Copeland. And, and let me tell you, you may not realize it, or it may have gone past you, but uh, Antioch, as a church family, has been through some things. In between 2020 and 2021, we had more than 120 homegoing services. And Reverend J. Scott, Pastor J. Scott Copeland, uh, was there for almost every one of them. He visits the sick and he does so much for our church. He calls, he prays, 
And so we want to celebrate with him uh, on today. And and it sounds just it just sounds like it's not that much that we that we did those services, but you have to understand if you let your mind go back to that time uh, in 2020, uh, COVID was such a scare back then. Even my doctors were advising me not to do those services. But we stepped out on faith because it was our call. Jesus called us to serve, even if it was dangerous. And so many of those services were gravesides. And let me tell you something. If you've never been to a graveside service, Reverend Duncan can testify. We had some powerful graveside services. Uh, and the, though the though it hurt, and though the burden was heavy, the joy in all of it was that we knew our members were in a better place. But it's hard to find people who will serve on that level, and so we want to honor uh, God and honor and thank Reverend Copeland on today. It's time for our late tithes and offerings. Many of you may not know it. Ways to give will be shown on the screen. And, and if you're here in person, envelopes are in our pews, and you can give and just lift it up, and our ushers and deacons will assist us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will lead us in this offering, and this offering be used as you would have it used. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. glad that Jesus is on your side. We thank God for those who were baptized today. Thank God for those who received the right hand of fellowship. And look at our youth ushers ushering. Male chorus singing. They didn't. They didn't send me the memo about the purple ties. They, they didn't send me the memo. We want to congratulate our very own Reverend Oscar Scott, who uh, crossed the burning sands of Kappa Alpha Psi last week. Listen, let me tell you something. You better learn how to celebrate. Every little thing you can celebrate. Look, I'm going I'm to give God the thanks. I hate to say it in a way because it's hard to believe, but on last week, I celebrated my 40th anniversary of when I became a cop. Bunch of alphas looking at me right now. You know, we celebrate alphas too. So. All right, y'all want to start? Listen, y'all, y'all better learn how to laugh. They're alphas and omegas, they always get all excited when we said Jesus was the alpha and omega. And I have to remind them, Alpha, that was in the beginning. Y'all wasn't there then. And Omega, that's the end. We're not there yet. Y'all living in Kappa time. If Dr. Mitchell was here, he'd get me straight. Father, we thank you for this offer and pray that it be used as you would have it used. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
for those of us who are going to uh, prospect, uh, we're praying for traveling grace. Uh, for those who are not going, uh, pray for us. Uh, pray for J. Scott Copeland. And remember to keep our members in bereavement and our members who are sick and those who are taking care of members who are sick. We praise God. Uh, our sister Ollie Nelson is out of the hospital. She's got a great supportive family. A whole bunch of friends, a whole bunch of people have been praying. I tell you, let me tell you something. Don't you, and listen, please pray. Many of you may not remember him, but he's preached here at least twice. was a good friend of my father's and, and, and myself. We're praying for uh, Dr. Reverend, Reverend Dr. O. Bass out of Carolina who passed. Uh, if God has given you another day, you make the best of that day. God didn't wake you up for you to walk around moping and complaining and with your head down. Turn to somebody and tell them you've got more going for you than you have going against you. Tell them I can look at you and tell God's been good to you. Let us stand. Thank our musician. Let us pray. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with extreme joy. The only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. And all God's children said, Amen. May God bless you. May God keep you.